Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. One of the most amazing and awe-inspiring events in nature takes place twice a year in the far north. And that's the focus of this scenario. It's a homebrew written by Sean Little, and it's entitled The Migration. And so, as the northern lights dance over our heads, the players are ready. Let's begin our journey into the darkness. Sean? Good evening, everyone. I'll let you introduce your characters in a moment. You are located in a town known as Pardue Mills. It's a small northern Ontario town, central northern Ontario, originally set up as a lumber mill town at the behest of a very wealthy man named James Pardue. Think Walt Disney, but 1880-1890. He had designs to clear-cut the forests, mill the trees, and create a city of the future in the north. His plan was that he would have this city that would be used to harvest trees, harvest lumber, harvest furs, ship them out to the world through James Bay. Things were going fairly well for a while, but then Mr. Pardue, on a hunting trip in 1900, disappeared mysteriously. After a while, without his guidance, without his money backing the, the attempts to bring this, into a, this town into fruition, it, it essentially died off a bit. The town was vacated by a lot of the populace, and for a good number of years, few, few people lived there, lived in some of the closed out towns, and, or, sorry, houses and such. After a while, a mining uh, operation opened up across the river, across what is known as the Rift, which is a large uh, escarpment valley. And that town brought more wealth to, sorry, that uh, mining company brought more wealth to the town. People started moving up to work in the mine. People who still live there got jobs in the mine. More people moved into town with other businesses and operations. So that is why the town is actually a functioning place now. It is 1927. The mine is still booming. Silver, uh, large veins of silver have been discovered. And uh, it's in between the wars right now, so there's quite a market. There, You're actually, uh, right now, you're in a town hall meeting because something has happened. The migration of the caribou that are used by the native population down south of the town, by the people within the town, yourselves, the miners, everybody relies upon the caribou as a source of protein for the winter. But it's not there. Some of the members of the party and uh, the town are all investigators for the fed federal government and others who are there to research the migration. And some people, of course, are just regular locals. The uh, migration has not happened. It's been three weeks since they are due, and they are always on time. The town hall is about to begin, so please introduce yourselves. Tom? Oh, hello. My name is Dr. Owen Brody, and I am a professor of biology at uh, the University of Toronto. <clears throat> I've recently written a paper on... Uh, one of the uh, other species of uh, caribou, as they're commonly referred to, uh, uh, Rangifer turando um, uh, greenlandicus, uh, which was in the northern Manitoba areas. I'm here to study uh, uh, the Lotor variety, and uh, I am quite concerned that uh, they haven't shown up yet. I have a lot of expensive equipment, and uh, I'm due to go back soon. So that's basically me. All right. Um, uh, Jeff, can you introduce your character? Sure. I'm playing uh, Jimmy Marsden, uh, a young guy, about 21 years old. He's very much into jazz. He plays the upright bass, and he's kind of uh, good-looking, charming, uh, ladies man looking to get in trouble every now and then and hopefully someday he might get out of this small mill town okay thank you Corey I'm playing Clayton Perry I am a hunter uh, I've been around the town for about two three years now uh, I usually chunt the caribou and other uh, wildlife around the sound, but 
the caribou have been there's no sign of them so i'm just here to find out exactly what's happening and maybe i can help i also sell my pelts to uh miss helen bordro so that's my character all right and uh quinn can you introduce your character Oh, fuck. Um, hello? Oh, sorry. Um, so, yeah, I'm playing Helen Boydo. I am a Metis fey trappy and also studying as a zoologist. My character is an is an, migrated from the Canadian prairies to kind of advance up the social ladder and has been studying zoology at the University of Toronto, but still works as a fey trappy and outdoor space in most of the time. And I'm currently in town, basically, basically just settling down for some time. Gathering, hunting, hunting, and gathering within within limits. I work with Clayton, and we we we, we work at, at the trading post together to an extent. And yeah, okay, Troy. All right, I am playing Henrietta McKenzie, but most of the locals know her as Ma. Uh, she is. Uh, I guess you could say like a frontiers woman, sort of from another time. Uh, she's a little bit older. She's 45. Uh, she sort of ekes out survival in northern Canada, sort of finding work wherever she can. A uh, little bit of backstory, her mom owned and operated one of the finest brothels in the Yukon during the gold rush, but tragically died at the hands of a drunken disillusioned John who failed to stake a claim. Uh, she's had to fend for herself most of her life and kind of has sort of a gruff personality to come with that. Uh, she came to town trying to kind of make it straight, you know, work in the hotel, uh, you know, work at the, the fur trading company, but she's kind of resorted to doing sort of odd jobs around town. Uh, but she does need to hunt caribou to survive through the winter. Um, she'll probably be, you know, she wants to move down to Toronto eventually in her, in her older age um but for now she's trying to stake it out for one more uh one more winter okay thank you and finally mick um i'm playing percy daniels he's a 66 year old um naturalist uh, an autodidact he's a self-taught naturalist and biologist who uh originally came from edinburgh but emigrated to canada in the mid 1880s um He's written several books, which, while a little dry and lacking in popular appeal, have been relatively well received in academic circles. In 1908, he was awarded an honorary doctorate in zoology from Queen's University in appreciation of his work. Um, but he's not really interested in acclaim or praise. His motivation more comes from a genuine love of his, of his subject. Um, he spent a great deal of his life in the outdoors and is an accomplished and confident woodsman with a functional grasp of uh, bush, bushcraft who'd rather be out in the woods than at home in his little bungalow in Pardue Mill. Um, he's not the youngest of men anymore. He's getting on a bit, and um, he's, he's not quite as spry or as uh, nimble as he used to be, but uh, he's, he's become a little stubborn about ad admitting that uh, age is, is finally getting the better of him, so uh, he doesn't take well to being um, helped. He might also be said to be just slightly eccentric. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, everyone. The scene is you are in a town hall in Pardue Mills. Uh, it's adjacent to the local uh, Catholic church. Uh, you are sitting in uh, together because, uh, which will be explained to you, you have been chosen and or volunteered to be part of an investigative body by the town council. The mayor and some others are sitting down uh, on a uh, sort of platform above everybody. There's coffee. There's uh, sandwiches provided by one of the local restaurants. It is blowing snow and windy and crazy outside. So you are happy to be in a nice warm place with a bunch of other people instead of in your own little homes uh, suffering from the cold. So I'll begin. The mayor stands before you. Everyone, please sit down. Davis, can you shut off the radio? We all know the forecast. Snow's coming. I hope everyone's ready for the first big storm of the season. Not that we haven't had a lot between now and you know end of October. All right, we're all friends here, but I'll still introduce everyone at the, uh, the table here to make it good for the records. Of course, you know, I'm Ted Dykstra, your mayor. You know my deputy mayor here, Chip Willis. We have Father Donahue and my clerk, Mary Todd, who will be taking minutes for the meeting. 
Also guests in the back include Dr. William Slade from the Department of the Interior, Captain Rick Holmes of the Army Base, and uh, Hurrip Minga Davis from the local Cree, Cree elders down south. We all know him. Finally, Ben Baird uh, Thompson is here representing the mine operations. As we all know, can't forget it, we step outside. Uh, winter's coming, it's here, it's cold already, and we have a problem. The caribou haven't come through the rift. They always do, but there's no sign of them. We need the meat, we all do, but the storm's happening, the planes just aren't gonna be able to get in with any uh, extra resources, even if we can, you can find someone to send them to us. Some of the federal guys are here doing research on the, on the caribou, and right now they don't have any answers, but I'll let them speak for themselves. We've created a small team of local guides and such, and including some of the researchers, uh, in hopes that uh, they can go off and find out what's going on. Because of the weather, we have a slim chance of getting extra food this weekend, so very little, very little more as the time flies, as the, sorry, as the snow flies, and the runway is just too small. Uh, we keep trying to clear it off, and the, as the Army guys say, it keeps filling back up again. Captain Holmes will talk to that as well. So I'll let the doctor first uh, speak first. Uh, so. Frank Mossberg comes up. Dr. Mossberg steps up. He's he's older. He's shuffling. I don't think he likes the cold. Like the mayor said, we don't know what happened to the caribou. We have three viewing huts along the 50-mile length of the rift. They're all manned. We haven't had any reports of sightings. Really, that's all we know. We have no record of what's happened in the past. This is the first time we've actually researched these uh, these beasts. The plans were we were going to take photos and numbers and count as they passed each stage of the each stage with the viewing huts from the rift for the next 50 miles north. Nothing. So we don't know what's going on. And we have, like I said, we have no record of what's happened or what's happened in the past. The priest, Father Donahue, stands up and he says, that's bullshit. The mayor gives him a dirty look and he sits back down again. And the doctor the doctor, he looks at him, Dr. Dr. Mossberg, and he says, do you know something? He goes, never mind, say your piece. I'm out of this. And the flummox, the doctor continues. Well, I, I, I just say that I wish the team success and we'll have to provide any information or equipment they need. Thank you. He sits down. So the mayor stands up again and says, Father, do you have something to add? No, not now. I'll talk to them, the investigators later if they want. And the crowd murmurs, and uh, as the crowd murmurs, Hurt Minga Davis, older gentleman, as you know, he's a local Cree elder, about the same age as the priest, walks over and whispers to the father in his ear. And uh, they both stand and move to the back of the room by the door. Captain then approaches the stage. Captain, the mayor says, Captain Holmes, thank you very much. What can you tell us? Captain doesn't get on the stage. He stands at, stands at floor level, at ease, hands behind his back, crossed. Okay, people, we have a flight scheduled for Sunday morning. It may bring us some food. We're hoping to get it in. There may be a break in the weather. Another on the following Wednesday with some dry goods and milk powdering, just in case our luck fails this time. And Dr. Brody, just letting you know your package arrived. Please Excellent. come and see me at the base tomorrow if you could. Thank you. Thank you. The mayor says, thank you all. And the door, right then there's a burst of cold air as the Cree elder, uh, Mr. Davis, and uh, the father leave. Snow and cold wind blows in the door, knocks a couple sandwiches off the table. Oh. Someone rushes and shuts the door. And the mayor says, oh, well, well, let's introduce the team. So as everyone knows, we've gone around and we all asked whoever would be interested in taking part. We have Clayton Perry, local, Dr. Owen Brody, Jimmy Marsdale, Percy Daniels, Elaine Bordeaux, Henrietta, Ma McKenzie, as we all know. And... Uh, they volunteered their time and their efforts to uh, help us find out what's going on. So uh, if there's anybody has any questions, the team, feel free to ask now, but I don't know what else we can offer you right now. Dr. Mossberg. Dr. Mossberg. Yes. Um, quick question. Um, by the way, I'm a longtime admirer. I read, uh, I read your migration of the Miskwetunk at Wepperwill, and I thought it was fascinating. Um, um, Oh, thank you very much. I find whippoorwills are just the most amazing creatures. Do you um, do you think that any of this problem could be caused by uh, the mining being done over at uh, uh, McGrively Will uh, McGrively Mill? Mine, well, sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, 
we thought about this. The problem is the rift goes north. And we have, as, as, as we noted, we have these listening posts or visual posts every 20 miles and then 10 at the top. And the, the mining operation takes place on the far side of the rift. It should not affect it because it's actually too far south. We would actually, we're, we're, we were suspecting that if the mine was responsible, that it would have affected them as they got closer to the town, that we would have actually seen them through the first two listening posts, but we haven't seen anything. Mm -hmm. And of course, Bear Thompson, the mining representative, just goes, <clears throat> told you. I, I stand up. I stand up. And I say, and I say uh, has, the has the other towns been affected with uh, my uh, caribou? So, yeah, I basically say, um, is the, as other towns have this uh, similar? There are uh, no towns north of this. This is, well, you haven't been around here too long, have you? <laughs> A few people laugh around. Wow. We are the most northern town in this area that uh, relies upon the caribou as far as we know, because north of us, beyond the rift, it opens up into boreal forest. There's towns to the east, towns to the west, towns to the south, but nobody north of us uh, between us and where the caribou spend their summers. Okay. I've got a question for the other, for the doctors in the, in the area. We, yes. People aren't the only ones that depend on the caribou. I'm... I'm, I'm assuming that most of the local ecosystem, wolves and other predators, also hunt these caribou. So mm -hmm. we can assume that if it was a sudden, like a sudden drop in the caribou population, that would that would have fallout over the entire ecosystem. If 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 you get what I'm trying to say here. So, have there been any noticeable shifts in the population of other creatures? Good point. Good point. Not this year. Our counts of uh, bears and wolves and coyotes and such have maintained slightly higher than previous years, but nothing out of the ordinary, nothing out of uh, acceptable ranges. Mm -hmm. So we have not noticed anything this year. And the caribou were actually detected and seen in their northern feeding areas as recently as two months ago. So we can, oh, we can that, assume that, that any- to be my question. So we can assume that yeah. any change has been very recent. Yes, that's our assumption. Uh, Ma kind of stands up a little bit and she's like, uh, I got a, I got a question for, for the army feller. Have you guys been using, uh, using them airplanes to, to, to look out for these caribou? I expect you'd be able to see them from way up there. Well, we don't generally fly north in the bad weather. I'll tell you, we were the ones who saw the caribou two months ago when we flew north on a, a northern, uh, well, we flew north, let's just say, uh, towards, uh, let's say, James, uh, James Bay. Uh, we were the ones who reported back that we'd seen the caribou because the dude doctor asked us to uh, report anything out of the ordinary. And that's, uh, that wasn't out of the ordinary, but it was just something we thought he'd be interested in. That, that it was a, quite a large population, and they were, they were, we could see them through the trees as the leaves were uh, falling off the trees in the autumn. So uh, generally, we have very small small aircraft we don't fly any large aircraft and uh the transports come from the south directly to the base and they don't fly any farther north so yeah. don't it's think it's time. us I'd like to say it's not us uh, i have another question um sure have you heard any reports on uh any of the other herds uh um uh roger for tarandus caribou greenlandicus or grani have, have they shown any changes in their migrations the reports are due in the spring from my other research teams that are located uh farther north one in quebec one in manitoba one in northwest territory what's it called that then uh, yukon. Yukon. yukon well right. yukon's even farther uh, uh northwest you know uh, I still think it would be the Northwest Territories. Yeah, I think it was Northwest Territories back then still. So we, we have uh, we have other research teams researching the various groups, and we have no reports so far of any any uh, mm. any differences in the other herds. And no missing, certainly no missing herds, that's for sure. I'm going to lean over next to Ma and kind of whisper to her. So what is he asking us to do? Is he saying we're just going to like bundle up and just start walking in the woods looking for caribou? Yeah, I guess so. These uh, 
these city folk coming in, they need uh, our expert opinion, I suppose. She kind of sips on her coffee and it's a glare to the, <laughs> to the to the scientist. Does, does she hug her log? Oh, wow. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I was I'm hoping. lowering my sanity. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Well, um, I hear someone questioning about uh, what we're asking you to do, and that is part of the discussion tonight. So once we clear out the rest of the townsfolk, we'll go into those details. All right. He's got a very sharp ear, this doctor. For <laughs> <laughs> 67. Uh, Any other questions from anyone? Uh, I guess hmm. um, as a general side of question to the federal folks in the area, is there any plan for government subsidies or some kind of some kind of aid program to deal? Because the, the area seems to be pretty struggling, and any help is not, like I understand that planes and stuff can't come in. But if, is there any plan for like some extended program of government subsidies for the area or something like that? Well, the doctor. I guess you're assuming they're asking the doctor because he is with the federal government. Yeah, the most high federal person. In the that area. Would yeah. Uh, it's it's the 1920s. Just you know, um, they generally uh, people do fend for themselves or to to a degree. This far north, there is uh, historically there is money in the town because of the mine. It's really just a food situation, and the federal government has said they will bring food in through the airport as soon as they can get in. And the problem is the weather right now. We've had some storms that are hitting us since late October. And it's, it's the storms during the nighttime, lots of snow. It all melts by midday because we're still above freezing during midday. Mm -hmm. But then the storms kick in again at nighttime, so there's not really enough time to land an aircraft. I lean uh, over to Ma and I say, uh, so I assume you know how to cook squirrel and rabbit and stuff like <laughs> that because, to be honest, it's not in my diet, but I'll eat it if I have to. Honey, you're going to be eating some uh, crazy, crazy shit out there. If uh, what this doctor uh, doctor says is true, we're going to have to we're going to have to scavenge. Well, I'm glad we're bringing along a couple of hunters because I'm not a hunter. I've never <laughs> killed anything in my whole life. I can I can probably see if I can find some more some. Animal, uh, wildlife, but it's pretty bleak out there. Might, might, oh. might I ask a question? Um, has there been any change in the uh, the scale of the the white deer population, white tailed deer population in, in the region? Haven't noticed any change out of the ordinary in any wildlife species so that we've been no, monitoring. No, no, no sudden growth in the white tailed deer. Population or, or change in their range or something? Not that we've uh, not that we've noted. I mean, granted, again, we we tend to summarize our our fall winter reports in our spring at our for our spring sessions uh, back in Toronto. But uh, so far, field reports I've seen show no changes in other other wildlife issues. Mm. Uh, and and there ain't nothing blocking them from entering the rift, right? As far as far as we know, avalanche. I mean, we're not like in the mountains, but you know, heavy snowfall or something that's blocking. I was, them. I was considering an avalanche too as a possibility. Yeah. I just I don't know if we're at like the elevation where that would be an issue, but well, we haven't. The military uh, officer, Captain Holmes, speaks up. We haven't had any flights up that north, or up up to the, to the north of to follow the rift line in again, again, about six weeks to eight weeks because we haven't had reason to go up there. This time of year, we're a little nervous. It's about uh, flying anywhere outside of flight paths because storm kicks up and you got to land in the woods and that's never good. Um, uh, I want to, I want to ask something though to the GM because it's probably mm -hmm. something because we're studying this and because these people yeah. live here that we would already know. How, do, what, where would we expect the the caribou to be? Would they move from the north down to the south inside the rift? Or yes, that's that's what has been happening historically. Is the caribou are in the north in a, a more northern you know, two hundred kilometers, so 
Okay. Or this is where they stage for the fall. They move down into the southern uh, boreal forest, south of Pardue Mills, between you and the, the more right. populated areas. And they do travel down the rift. That's that's traditional. Okay. But it's not and thus, tradition. thus the ob observation posts are up on the cliff above, looking down into the rift, so they would that's see right. them. Okay. That's that right. That's right. So Henrietta kind of kind of hikes up her her pants a little bit and says, "All right, so what are we volunteering for?" You're volunteering to be the cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think she likes that. <laughs> All right, no. well, we're going to get into the details and give you some more information when the public questioning is over. So, does anybody else have any questions? He asks, and uh, some members of the public are, I wouldn't say outraged, but they're not happy. Of course, they're saying, "What are we going to eat?" What are we going to eat? Right, right. We don't all work at the mine. They have better food than us. They have their own restaurants. They have their own food supply come in. Are they going to help us out if we need food? Bear Thompson says, we'll help out. We'll help out what we can, but we, we, we generally get our food shipments in around now for the winter, and we supplement that with the caribou, same as you guys. But uh, we might be able to help out a bit, but certainly not for the whole winter. Other people are upset saying, you know, like we've, the, the, the mill operation is not what it used to be, but they do generally rely upon uh, some stockpiling of wood through the winter and selling it as soon as the snow melts. They can't, uh, right now, there's, they're running out of places to put it because the ground is getting wet during the day and freezing. It's difficult to move it around. So there's some, they have, some people have some concerns and questions about that the military says well maybe we can help because we have some tractor equipment we can help with. so they're, they're all talking through some various issues the biggest concern is what are we going to eat right so after all of that's over does anybody else have any more questions for the public meeting hmm. well i guess i guess i'll, I'll have you um, there's no chance of us getting any kind of military support in the sense of like aircraft that we could use because i feel even like even having a single propeller plane would be a lot more helpful than just going on foot we will be assisting you, and uh, we'll discuss that after the public meeting's over. Mm -hmm. I, I would suggest with, with this, with this um, avalanche theory, um, Dr. Brody had um, advanced, um, yeah. typically caribou Tend to migrate in stages with the with the cows setting off first ahead of yes. the rest of the herd, which which would mean that it, had there been some sort of natural um, impediment, we would probably have seen some remnants of the herd moving through the region. Plus, it seems unlikely that, that, that something. I mean, it would have to be a, a, an avalanche on quite an extraordinary scale in order in order to block the entire herd. Like Let's that, hope that the avalanche wasn't caused by them and fell on them. Yes, I mean the, what, you're correct. There would there would still be a remnant because we're talking about uh, what is, what is this? Uh, Two hundred thousand in this herd? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the that's the estimate. Jesus. Yeah, it's like. But they may have found if if an if if such a thing occurred, such as an avalanche, they may have simply found an alternate route. And we're standing here worrying about something that's going on a hundred miles to the the east, um, right under our noses, and yeah. we we just don't know it. We need to get airborne and see. Mm -hmm. I suppose if you if you if you say that they could have found an alternate route, I suppose historically speaking, th this kind of thing would have had to happen before that. There's some kind of blockage or some kind of avalanche that caused them to take a detour. So if yeah. there's any records, we could check to see if there's any kind of any kind of precedent for some kind of divergent of there, the caribou path. There's always going to be there's going to be a scientific explanation for this. Okay. Of course. Of course. And it's going to be the simplest scientific explanation. You'll see. Well, let's maybe, hope these eggheads are right. A, well, I hope not, but doctor. I hope not, but maybe I'm just, this is just my, uh, I'm not a scientist in all race, and maybe there was a disease or, or something that, you know. There are fairly hardy species, that, so. 
the, the only the only disease I could really think of would be um, brainworm. Like but, I'm not. Um, but we'd be looking at a, a at a corresponding explosion in the in the white deer population for that to have a correct. No, I know. I'm just I'm just saying there's there's always that possibility, right? So it's possible, but it wouldn't decimate two hundred thousand. That's extremely unlikely. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. Um, also, that's... I think one of one of the symptoms of brain worm is is that the the animals lose their fear of human beings. So, in fact, you'd be more likely to see caribou. We had all the evidence we have suggests that this was a very sudden, right? Is, that any any kind of disease would it it would have signs and it would take place over an extended period of time. There's no historical precedence for anything that just a, any kind of disease suddenly annihilating a population like this, even when you have pandemics. Well, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Daniels is correct in that it would, it would affect uh, other rongifer species, uh, the white-tailed deer, uh, things like that, that, that we definitely see a drop in population. Absolutely. Yeah, moose, moose, elk, they're all, they're all prey to the same kind of... Uh, correct. I know. I was just. I was just to give my own. No, it's, it was a good. It was a good. Good theory. It's one we should still consider <laughs> until we find otherwise. I'm well, still. Think, I'm still I mean, of the belief uh, that uh, uh, that vibrations in the ground set up by the mining might disturb the 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 cat the the sows badly. They're very how, protective. How, how far would those vibrations travel? Mm. Well, the I don't mine's, know what the mine's been here a while, right? And I don't know what the like, extent of it is underground. Did did the migration migration happen last year, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And the mine was was still there, so it happens. It happens unless twice something changed. Year. It happens okay. twice a year. Yes. Yes, there and back. So well, down south. It, it, yeah. It, it happened. Are we in the spring or the fall? We're, We're in the, the fall. fall. In the fall. So it happened in the spring. Mm -hmm. It did. They, they went up, but they didn't come back. Right. And they were well, seen. In the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the eight years that I've lived here, that's um, it, it's, it's been regular to almost the same week. Usually. Three weeks, three yes. weeks is entirely unprecedented. I can't. Yeah, they're real regular, all right. Mm -hmm. With they, about three weeks between the the bucks and the and the sows. Is this the bucks follow? afterwards this is, this is very odd. yeah it well, is odd. you scientists can jibber jabber about this i want to know <laughs> what we're doing here all right know. are we going to get paid yeah well I mean, let's other than these the delicious problem. sandwiches but if anybody wants some sandwiches to take home Henrietta and grabs and like five and stuffs them in her park <laughs> and stuffs them in her parka the local restaurant uh nicely set up this nice nice little banquet for us take all the food and coffee you want but uh please everybody who's not part of the team we'd like you to move into the other room and shut the door as soon as possible so we can finish up the discussions it's not that it's private it's really so much that uh we want to discuss in the details and uh too much talking might uh, might jeopardize the conversation so there's maestro's restaurant has provided with some sandwiches for us and uh, take all you want. People stand, people grab these interesting little, tiny little loaves of bread with meatball type things with them and cheese and sauce, very good. And they take them to the far room along with some cups of coffee. And uh, eventually everyone mills on out. A few people have to be ushered by the deputy mayor. Clerk is, uh, then the mayor says to the clerk, all right, thank you very much. You can uh, stop taking notes now. She goes, what? But we take notes for all of our meetings. He said, well, I want you to sit there, but don't write anything down right now. So here's what we've got going, everybody. Can we write notes? <laughs> you can take notes all you want. That's fine, of course. He says, you're going to have to talk to the priest. Father okay. Donahue has some more information. You can see he's visibly upset. He has some history that uh, will definitely be helpful okay okay tonight he's he has rheumatism he's got some other issues and he needs to get to bed and we'll be in he'll be hard to talk to if you go bother him right now hmm. you also probably 
want to talk to uh, Mr. Davis from the tree. But other than that, you spend your time the next day or so asking questions, doing what you want, whatever information you need. And then I assume you're going to go looking. And that's why you've got some hunters with you. Mr. Holmes here is going to provide you with a vehicle. You've seen it maybe around the north part of the town. It's called a Bombardier Snow Bus. Uh, he'd like to, uh, one of you who actually knows how to drive a vehicle, he'll give you some instruction on it tomorrow morning. Cool. Okay. Vintage. Just give me a second here. Oh, not vintage. It's brand new. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm saying that out of character. <laughs> Bombardier. 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 Snow bus. Okay, so you, it's a Bombardier snow bus. Uh, they will provide you with that. It's a tractor vehicle. Course, so whatever actually, will they come up with next? It's just amazing. <laughs> it's it's better oh. than the Ford one you uh, we had. We were going to provide you with, which is the mayor's personal vehicle, which is a Model T Ford with tracks on the bottom. <laughs> oh, it cool. actually did exist and does exist in the game, so it's a backup vehicle. Uh, when, I, when I when I came to live here, they were just just finishing the railways. And now, now we have things like that. It's like living in the future. <laughs> yeah. And vehicles that fly in the air and all that. It was only 20 years ago. Will, so, will, will that be a sufficient to uh, pull a sled behind it? You can tow a sled possibly? behind it. Yes. How Only much? A, uh, a fairly large sled with some supplies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there, I was saying, is there enough room inside enough for us? or? Yes. You, you like and a, a small amount of gear and gear up top. Now, he'll give you all the instructions on it tomorrow. Whoever is going to be the – if a few of you want to learn how to drive it, it's probably a good thing. Uh, because you actually have federal employees with you, he's allowed to lend it to you. So uh, so the idea is we're going to ask, we're going to ask you guys to go take a look. I'm, uh, I'm afraid I don't know how to drive a car, so. Ah, well, somebody needs – somebody will have to learn. Uh, Dr. Mossberg says we'd like you to actually do a little bit of research for us. Uh, it's not research. Uh, we would like you to go take a look at our huts. Honestly, we didn't tell the townsfolk, but one by one, the uh, radios, radio contact we've had with the huts has dropped off. Oh. We no longer have any contact with any of the huts except for the fourth, which isn't technically a hut. It's really just a, a, a platform north of the city along the rift, which would have been the last platform. So, so the other three are gone. When Sorry, you, go ahead. When you say one by one we've lost contact, what's the kind of time scale here? Is this an over the course of days, weeks, months? Over the course of a week, we lost contact with the most northern one first, the second closest, and then the third closest. One by one, they dropped off. And uh, there was, we had it, we had young students working in them. They had food enough to last them two weeks. They were delivered there by the military in the snow bus. And we no, we no longer have any contact with them whatsoever. And you said that the only one left is viewing station A? Uh, viewing station A is the only one left, yes. There's actually A, B, C, and D. D isn't shown on your map. It's actually much farther north. Right. C isn't shown either. Oh, well, sorry. So C is going up. They're just going up the rift. Uh, has, has, has anyone else um, reported problems with the, the radio equipment in the, in the area? No. Not, not, that, not that the mayor knows of. So. Not, not, not atmospheric, then. How many... Well, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, how many folks... Oh, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say, how, how, many, how many folks uh, did they uh, were at each of these uh, stations or huts? There was always one person at the station, and when one person arrived to replace them, because we have a series of students that come up throughout the winter, uh, they would go up and stay a night with the other person, and then the, the one who had been there previously would head back. So usually it was an overnight trip. The military would drive up, drop people off, and then come back and pick them up on the way back the mm -hmm. next day. Okay. So there was so either no more than one two or two people. That's right. But in this case, uh, there were at each time that the, per the the station cut off conversation, there was one person at the station. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just uh, some. Who, who is roughly the last? What's the name of the last person that was up in the uh, station? That your last record? 
the station D, it was Bob Thompson. Okay. Station C was a young fellow named Chet. Sorry. Chet, Chet Farnsworth. Good as each, everybody. That was station what? C or B? Station C was Chet Farnsworth. Station B was Eddie Smith. Eddie? Eddie Smith. Okay. And that's it, because station is the platform near the town. They were all good students. They all worked very hard at their work, or at their, their job. They were very meticulous in their report keeping. Every one of them was very good at reporting in uh, morning, noon, evening. Uh, as far as we know, there was nothing happening that they found suspicious or odd. Now, as we, uh, if we're going to travel towards the rift, is our best bet to follow along mine road A? I will bring up my map on my, my hand. Or should um, we, can we go well, directly I, there? I, I would yeah. think that if we were, if we were going to investigate the, uh, the first of the, the, uh, the viewing stations, we, we should take the mine road across to the um, the eastern side yeah. of the rift and, and, and work up along the edge. I, if, if as you suspect, there may have been an, an avalanche or a rockfall somewhere, mm. I think we'd, we'd, be, we'd be best served to uh, stay on high ground, which would give us uh, more visibility. Um, question for the GM. I'm looking at the map that you did for us with and yep. it's got a lot of dark green. Now, can we assume, since we're in the Northern Territories, are those trees or is it tundra where it's just... You're not tundra yet. You're still in boreal forest. The, okay. the dark green areas are trees. The lighter green are more shrubs and bush, like cedar, cedar brush that's no more than three or four feet tall, generally. The okay. brown areas are just showing areas where there's been disturbance of the soil and or it's bare rock or it's... Uh, plowed areas like the military around the military base so uh, uh mr daniels what, what are we suggesting that we at least take the road to get to the rift should we travel <laughs> along the rift or should we travel along the eastern side up above the uh, up above the rift if that's even well, possible with the forest well, I, I think I mean it's it's an it's an all-terrain vehicle, isn't it? But um, the, the question then is is would we be able to get the uh, the vehicle down into the rift if we needed to? Well, I believe there's a road. They get mining equipment and and stuff down there. The question I have is along the top of the edge of the rift, whether there's I mean it's an all-terrain vehicle, but is you can't walk on trees if there are trees in the way. So. Yeah, we getting to these stations, were they just like little little paths that the students would walk through, or is there like a, an actual clearing that we can get a vehicle through? Each of the stations is accessible by the vehicle. Okay. Uh, they've cleared okay. the military, cleared a path. It's not shown because it's not an official road. It's a okay. bush road or what would be known back then as a corduroy road where they laid logs down and put All dirt right. on okay. top so of the So we'd, be able, to, we'd mm -hmm. be able to get... Um, there, there will be access from the, the rift here, up, on, up onto yes. the, the cliff. Is it every yeah, so everyone's? Is it everyone's opinion then that we should go to platform A first? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing. It looks further than B. Um, is A is A the one that there's still contact with? Yeah, the, yeah. There's nobody actually stationed today. It's it's merely a platform with four walls and a, a kind of a, a roof. It's oh, open to the air. It's really for someone with binoculars. Uh, okay. Or well, think... a rifle. <laughs> so we should be headed towards this B station then and see if these students are <sighs> dallying around and forgot to turn on the radio. Mm -hmm. And sorry, I think you said this already, but uh, the distance between the platforms, roughly? 20 miles. 20 Generally miles. 20 miles. So it's about a day's, like a day's movement. Yeah. 10 miles between the road and B. And about 15 miles to get to the other side of the rift. Um, however, we're not leaving tonight. We're going yeah. traveling um, nighttime. I, is not recommended. We have to pick up. Uh, we have to pick some stuff up from uh, the airbase. Supplies, and we have to talk to the the father too. 
right and by the Cree leader to he may have more information so that you um, so that you all understand because I know you had questions earlier when we get closer when we get closer to the area that we want to survey um, I am a, a certified balloonist I'm bringing a hot air balloon along with me. oh god oh my goodness that's that's what he was talking about is that the air base waiting for me was delivered oh, oh boy that's uh, pretty no. cool I what I can do is um my my house is uh well it's not that far from station A so we can use that as a kind of a if we need to rest or stuff like that also I have enough guns to probably supply rally ops with just a small little well I have an apartment I'm running I've, I've been here for three weeks. Uh, well, and we shouldn't have to hit Station A, right? Because that's that was just like a just like a little platform. There wasn't anyone stationed there. Correct? Sorry, I'm just gonna head to the bathroom really quick. Okay. But, yeah, I'll be right back too. So, um, yeah, we need to go talk to the priest, but he seemed to indicate we shouldn't talk to the priest tonight. No. I would say let's uh, let's get some rest here. It sounds like we got a we got a ways ahead of us here. Um, and and that uh, priests are like servants of the people, and they're supposed to be on call all the time. And oh, he's a crotchety old guy. This is what you know just from the time you've been in here. He is, or at least he was, that. Now he's doing time. He doesn't want to be in the northern town. He's disillusioned. Ah, the, uh, so he, the may miners being, came he may be being disciplined by the Catholic Church for some infraction. <laughs> he didn't know. even come out for uh, that little baby's baptism a few weeks ago. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, I don't think he'll be really to talk to us. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, you, you, know, you know what they say. There are only two kinds of people who move out here. Those who want to and those who have to. Mm. He got that right. <laughs> Well, he, I, I, you will, you do know that when this town was, he's been here since the town was founded. Okay. The priest has been here forever. He was actually uh, one of the first twenty people to arrive in town. He is disillusioned mainly because when the town was founded, he was promised, and he, this is well known around town. He was promised that this would be his his base of operations to be more of a mission to bring the native people into the Catholic church. Mm -hmm. uh, that was his plan and the town was founded and he was here helping out as best he could at the time, friends with the founder, with the mine moving in, he's, there's people who are not of Catholic people. So there's actually more people now that are not Catholic as well. The, uh, the native people, but he can't travel that far. He, he's essentially putting in time. He doesn't want to be here anymore. That's mm -hmm. just, He's a grumpy old man. And he's old, so he's probably getting tired of the cold. Yep, mm. uh, it cr makes his bones creak. That's another reason he generally, you know that when they say he's he doesn't want to talk tonight, it's because he goes home and has a few sh shots and goes to bed until yeah. he wakes up in the morning. It's right. a hard life for a man who doesn't have to do any real work. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. Um, well, Ma... Uh, um, how long have you mm. been in town? How long have you been living here? I've been here about uh, about three, four years now. Getting pretty sick and tired of it, if you're going to ask me. And then we got to deal with this this crap. But uh, yeah, I've been been around uh, been around these uh, northern parts, but thinking of heading south here. Uh, said you're from Toronto, right? That's that's not where I was born and raised, but yeah. I'm at the I'm at the university there. I got family out in Saskatoon, but God knows I'm not uh, not heading heading back out there. Hmm. Um, I'm sorry. Outside of the game, like uh, Ma, what do you do? Are you? Uh... <laughs> she does like odd jobs around town. Um, she's known as I have points in uh arctic survival so she's kind of known as like uh someone that can like acclimate the newbies to uh you know to to winter survival 
Um, but you know, she does hunting. She came, you know, to work like, you know, like actual like legitimate jobs for a woman at this time, like secretarial jobs and stuff, but found that really wasn't her style. So she's uh she's kind of a a renaissance lady, if you will. I was, uh, didn't suit her. No, huh? I, we're we're dry here in Canada, aren't we? Yes. Uh, oh, it is. I don't think oh. I didn't know they have prohibition. In uh, we did research on this today. <laughs> oh, okay, I, good to know. It's actually, true. Actually, when I was a kid, even that, even in the the eighties, there was a town north of where I lived, and there was an actually there was not allowed to be what the government liquor is sold, sold in government stores here. The LCBO yeah. was not allowed to be in the town limits. Wow. So it's yes, like this, this counties. Is, so yeah. there's no tavern or anything in town. Huh? There is no legal alcohol in this town. Is there a kind of place where everybody gets together and plays darts and yeah, there has to be like food? an inn, like some kind of inn is something like that. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a, a restaurant inn down the road. Place, a place where called, people hang out. Yeah, it's called the Brass Monkey, and it's uh, uh, it's it's at the edge of it's at the edge of downtown. Uh, I can tell you where. If you look at your map, mm -hmm. uh, the second seven from the left. Okay. It's in that area. Second seven. Area. Okay. And it is a that gathering. That would probably place. be. Yeah, that'd probably be the part of town that Henrietta lives in. I, I would assume. Yeah. Um, and Hotel Nordic is that more of like a legitimate kind of where the feds stay at kind of place or okay. it's a more yeah. posh there, there is another couple of little um there's rooming houses there are definitely there's no official other hotel that is the only actual hotel but it's a little too posh for the locals um mm -hmm. it's not posh to someone coming from toronto just uh it's it's just just a little run kind of a rundown three-story more like a rooming house but it's a hotel mm -hmm. i'm staying at tilly bank's uh, boarding house which is just just slightly north of there. Okay. All right. Well, do you guys want to retire to you know someplace more comfortable? This place is kind of chilly in here. Yeah, the mayor's getting a little antsy. He wants to get going. If you guys need anything, you know where my office is. You do. Uh, Captain Holmes says uh, I'll expect you guys at 0900 tomorrow. You need right. to run down to the vehicle and the other equipment. The uh, uh, the deputy mayor is already gone. He's off eating sandwiches. So there's nothing, uh, no one left in the room really except for you guys now and the mayor who just wants to get going home. Um, when, when, when no one's looking, um, I'd, I'd like to uh, stuff a few sandwiches into my pockets. <laughs> Henrietta's doing the same thing. Yeah. Just, just for later, I'm, you know. Go for it. <laughs> You have sandwiches in your pockets. That's what <laughs> now they yeah. are a little messy, but that's okay. They're wrapped up in. Well, in that's in what I can, I can. I'll. I'll. I'll yes, you know. I'll, I, I can wrap them in a handkerchief if need be. I've done yes. this before. The assumption was the restaurant was expecting people to take them, so nobody's nobody's watching you and counting or anything like that. Unfortunately, nobody seems to ever understand that I'm vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> Henrietta kind of like, kind of like guffaws. Freaking meat all over those things. <laughs> I'll make do. There's no spinach dip or anything like that. No. <laughs> uh, I'll make sure there's eventually an option for that town hall. <laughs> okay, so where are you guys going? I'd say we go to the Brass Monkey. I, I was well, going to figure... Oh. Oh, sorry, I'll go. I was gonna say if you're if you're just if you're just gonna be staying the night, uh, if we're doing it in the morning, I would like to go back to my house get all my equipment ready, but then we'll be ready for the what, morning. What time is it actually? Uh, it's only about eight o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Started the, the meeting started around seven. At the in the evening, okay. Yes. Yeah, we. I already knew that this was coming, so I've I've already put together all my equipment. Okay. So, brass monkey, um, I'll I'll join you, doctor. Do you uh, you like to play? Of course. I was thinking. All right. I was thinking of talking to the 
native dude, Hyun James. What was his? Davis. Yeah. Hyun Davis. Yes, I was going to go see, speak with him. I feel, I feel out of us. I would be the most. I, I imagine we might find him at the Brass Monkey. Well, me. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, seems like. I mean, it's where everybody hangs out in the evening. Right. It's, it's, it's it warm. is warm. Of sorts yeah. to go to. Mm -hmm. All right. So, Corey, are you? Or sorry, Clayton, are you going back to your? Uh, home or are you going to the brass monkey well i if you know what i would like to uh what time are we going to be ready are we going to leave right early in the morning or what's exactly going to be we'll be ready by eight then i'll so. go i'll go i'll go to the brass monkey even though that yeah i'll go to the brass monkey all right okay so okay so, so. you're it's a yeah it's a not a very far walk by any means. Um, it's windy, snowy, chilly. Um, you certainly can get there uh, within a couple of minutes, walk in the door. A lot of townsfolk uh, who were not at the town meeting are in there. It's not as busy as it would be on that night, but uh, right. or on a typical night, but that's because the people were, a lot of them were at the town hall meeting and there was free food. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as suspected, uh, Mr. Davis is, is, is at the end of the one room playing Crokinole. Mm -hmm. Nobody who's not Canadian I knows what No Crokinole idea is. what that is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, young, I know yeah, what yeah. that is, so. <laughs> Only Cro Corey and I. Crokinole? Quinn, do you know what Crokinole is? Nope. Okay. It's an octagonal board where you flick little round circles you try to get them into the center but these pegs are i'll show i'll send you guys a picture next week oh <laughs> I, I found this on game is that, is that like nine men's morris hmm i'd have to look that up <laughs> all right but anyway so, so yeah, they're playing cool. crokinole and uh some people are playing darts some people are playing cards it's just a little gathering place lots of coffee lots right. of coffee <laughs> and some food so what would you, and Mr. Davis is there with another uh, member of the Cree tribe that traveled up with him. And we've, um, we've met him before and probably know him, don't we? You've seen him around town. Definitely the locals have seen him and mm -hmm. uh, possibly dealt with him in the past uh, for some trading. But I, I, I'm uh, assuming absolutely. I know, I would like have had some contact with him too. Yes. too like, you yeah. definitely, and Clayton That's as well, yeah. and Ma. Mm -hmm. Uh, Henrietta Ma kind of goes up to Dr. Brody. Hey, you want me to introduce you to, uh, to Mr. Davis? Yeah, I don't know him formally. That, that would be All nice. Right. All right. He's, he's so. like the, an elder, isn't he, in the, in the Cree tribe? Yes. Not elder in that he's 80 years old. Right. But he's elder he's one of the count on the, on the Cree yeah. council. He's actually the, the council. Yes. So he's probably in his, you know, late forties, early fifties. Very, uh, Tough, rough and tumble kind of looking guy, but he's very well spoken. But not the chief. No, Just no, chief is too old to travel this far in the winter. Right. Okay. Yeah, please, please. Um, so, so we kind of sidle up to him, uh, and Ma calls him chief, but um, it's because she just doesn't give a shit. But um, <laughs> hey, chief, uh, hey, uh, Doc wants to talk to you here. We're. Uh, Get some questions for you and she kind of she kind of goes to grab like a pot of coffee and fill up his coffee for him yeah kinda, mr uh, mr nice. davis may i call you mr davis or absolutely absolutely or you can I even say, call me by my first name if you wish uh the heck's the name again? yep parrot yep. parrot okay parrot um very nice to meet you my first name is owen nice um, to meet you um uh, what uh, I'm just curious what you think might be behind this uh, ah. your people have hunted the, the, the caribou for a thousand years mm -hmm. we don't know exactly we just know that it's very concerning because we rely upon the, the protein we rely upon sales of the furs as, as anyone else would and this is the first time in many years that it's gotten this far into the winter and we haven't seen sign of them yet. We were about to send some people up north as well until we spoke to the mayor and he explained that you people were going to be uh, gathered to do the same work. So if we can help you in any way, we will. Um, really all, all we know right now is 
then he looks around and he looks around and doesn't see anybody close by that's a local who says we know it's happened once before once before there was a winter no caribou whatsoever and that was uh 1900 when that happened and there was no Ooh. sign of them but the very following year they came back not in very not as many as before one are one these of, are these tribal are these tribal records or are there any formal records of this actually happening this is just word of mouth this is just things word things of mouth. things i found out when i was speaking to the chief before i came i was around I've, then, uh, I was, I've, I've been uh uh studying a little bit of your uh of the Cree religious beliefs and I uh, I was not aware of the 1900 uh, uh, lack of migration uh, are there any theories of your in your tribe as to what it might be caused uh, grandfather is it grandfather caribou I believe or there is that concern there is that thought we we changed some of our ways shortly after that at the advice of our elders at the time yeah. uh, the caribou came back the following year so we our elders like to assume that what we changed affected mm. that um it'd be, it'd be interesting to know if there's any like weather changes or weather or things that happened in the weather that occurred at the same time in we do know that it was a happened. very harsh winter it was a very harsh, very winter, harsh that winter year. October, same as this year. Uh, the Northern Lights, well, the Aurora, whatever you wish to call them, were brighter than we had ever seen them before. And again, mm. this year, and you know this as well, they've certainly been very vibrant, very colorful most every night. Very well, even on nights in the fall. Um, where about... Uh... What direct like? How, where did you find them, or did or did they not? You might have said that, but the caribou. Yes. Well, they they came back the next the next year. The next year, <laughs> there's less of them. One third what there is normally. That's what the elders remember. So you don't you don't know roughly where they were before. We don't know because we, we did send some people, but we didn't find anything. Because maybe where they were before would be where they are now. Yeah. But possible. Well, if you uh, if you certainly if you find the problem, you find where they are. It certainly will help all of us out. Well, it's yes, it's the livelihood of everyone here. I have I have scientific reasons for studying them, but. I, I know that your people, as well as the people living here in this town, rely on these, uh, these, uh, it's your food source and everything else. So I am, I am quite concerned. And if there's anything that I can do to help, please Thank contact you. me. Although where we're going out, we're going out tomorrow to start looking for them and see if we can find them. Um, I'd like, to, I'd like to say, like, kind of aside, like in Cree, my character speaks Cree, I'd like to say, if there's any, if there's any sensitive, if there's any sensitive information, or I suppose more personal histories that you'd be reluctant to share with outsiders, I suppose I, I, I'd, I'd like to hear that if there's anything like that that you'd be unwilling to share with, 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 with not with with outsiders essentially, that could help us. All right, um, give me a second here. Where's your What's your character called again? Uh, oh, not your character. Oh, uh, hold on. There's something here. Um, oh, I didn't know Harriet spoke Cree. Um, I was I wasn't sure how to assign points to language, but I'm assuming that this kid, uh, that this character kind of grew up in a very like mixed like mixed community and kind of at the same time was speaking like a mix of English, French, and Cree. Sure. Well, said she's Matee, right? Yeah. So, okay, so that makes sense. Well, sir, sir, I, I would say you, I mean, we can work on your percentages before the next. Uh, oh, yeah. next I, 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 I wasn't sure how to exactly assign points to language, but. We can work on that before. But but could you give me a roll then? Just yep. a percentage roll? Okay, give me a moment to figure. Um, 
Okay, let's do 100. How, how, how does this, how does that work on this interface? You want to get the number or lower? No, no I, I, I know how that works. I'm just not sure how to roll one. Click on the plus beside the percentage value. Yeah. That's the and number of dice. Roll. Okay, so hang on. Wait, 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 wait. Um, I, I'm just, okay, wait, the plus, but. You're oh, in the dice screen? Yeah. So There's a little percent. Up, yeah, do it just click that up to 100? No, 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 no. Click down to one. You you want the percentage button and just click, click it once next to it and it'll. Yeah, you want. Say you, you want to roll one percent of dice. Oh, oh okay, roll. it's one percent. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you, so you fill that. your screen with dice. Ninety. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> okay, well, he uh, I I can't. He, he nods, smiles, smiles at your attempt. Says, "Nice, I I." I Thank you for trying, essentially. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in a very polite way, he says, you know, people try to speak Cree to him all the time who live up north. And uh, not that you failed as miserably as somebody who just tried because they heard a few words at the grocery store. But uh, nods, smiles, shakes your hand. That's about the end of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tried. Good try, though. Yeah, it was a good try. Good try. But... I didn't know. I'm going to eat one of my sandwiches, yep. and um, it's got while, pocket while sort of yeah, while, while just sort of I could do with a bit of mustard actually this episode. Um, but while ruminating over my sandwich, you know, it 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 occurs to me that um, I mean I've not lived here that long. I've I've only seven or eight years but, but I, 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 I do like to to immerse myself in a bit of local history it does occur to me that the, the 1900 I believe was also the, the year that old man Pardu went missing That's are you so ruminating on aloud? A hunting, on a hunting trip yes yes I'm I am <laughs> that's correct well, how many mm -hmm. people have, how, so have you been here longest, Percy? I've been here seven or eight years. You yeah, may be I, mean, I, I, I came, I came through some some time ago. Um, I mean, I've been I've been through the the, the region quite a lot over the years. But you are I, correct. You settled here seven or eight years ago. You you do know that you are correct that 1900 is when he went off on a hunting trip. And mysteriously vanished. I hmm. don't know very much about it. I, I just know it's a it's a, a local mystery. They ne they never found him. There's actually a plaque in the in the this, this city park. The uh, well, it's called City. Hmm. It seems a strange coincidence. I mean, you you you, you wonder if it if if it is some um, natural disaster, some some region that's prone to landslides or rock falls or something? Uh, no. We should definitely uh, check it out. That's a, that's a good uh, um, revelation there. Uh. Is that a bobcat? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's the cat that lives at the inn. <laughs> oh. I think it's the at Makwa. Still a filthy thing. I died. I, I, I don't cut hair all over my sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> they take care uh, of the rat. Uh, Henrietta cut in Dutch as Dr. Brody is like, uh, we got the, the you know, that, that'll be, uh, that'll be our uh, entree once uh, if we don't get these caribou back. <laughs> I think there's you already mean, some uh, of, uh, I think there's already something very similar in this sandwich. You really, you no, really no, 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 no. Yeah. Doctor Brody, because she knows that you're uh, you're a vegetarian, so she's gonna <laughs> she's gonna keep needling you about that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, I, I assumed that you were talking about Mr. Daniels will be your entree. He will be. Ah, <laughs> uh, maybe that in the too. Of nowhere. He's he'll be better fed than the rest of you because he keeps pocketing sandwiches. Uh. All right. Um, well, as you're ruminating aloud, Percy. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Davis says, uh, he says, I noticed that as well. I thought of that when, during the meeting, but it's not something that the elders spoke to me about. So I also find this 
to be very interesting, to say the least. Probably warrants more talking with somebody who was around at the time. Hmm. And that would be Father Donahue, right? Because he's, uh, he's he been the head. longest. Uh. Um, a quick aside to the GM. Um, mm -hmm. You emailed me when I was making my character, and you said um, that, that, that I, I've got connections with the local native elders through my parents, who who knew them well. So I was wondering if I could bring that up. Yes, that is correct. You um, you know the elders. Um, you don't personally know them, but I know that my parents had some connections. Yes. So. You can certainly okay. bring up your parents. Yes. Okay, yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I'd like to bring that up if we're still talking to Hiron. I'd like to mention that my parents had, my my parents had history with, with that, with some of the tribe elders, and given that this had to be around that same, frame of time, I'm wondering if, if any of the people who knew my parents are still around, or if I if I could, if I could talk to someone who knew my parents and had connection with them. Well, he says. I don't know of your I don't know your parents myself, but there are some members of the the elders that probably that would probably know them as you say. Mm -hmm. uh, the oldest member of the elders who is not the chief is Tom Whitefish and he's not here. He's down at the uh, it's like how far probably about a half a day's snowmobile long snow cat ride. They're not. They're not nearby. They're close enough that they can. They travel back and forth to trade. And in the summertime, it's a lot faster when the roads are better. But uh, mm -hmm. half a day, a few hours. So. So yes, absolutely. Um, okay. They they probably absolutely know know them. Okay, right, that's something. Um, uh, ladies, and gentlemen, any of you Catholics around here? Are any of you Catholic? My mother was French um, Catholic, but I never practiced too devoutly. Yeah, same, same thing with Henrietta. Yeah. I was just wondering if if, uh, if Father Donahue does morning mass or something, we can catch him. Eh, if he isn't hung over, Henrietta. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, he, he's he's not too uh, too particular about that, and his Latin's pretty rusty. So uh, mm -hmm. usually he just uh, waits until the evening. I'm well, tomorrow is, is Saturday. So, they're probably, uh, he, he's probably going to be at morning mass about six in the morning, I would think, six or seven. Because okay. Catholic priests can do mass whether there's people there or not. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're supposed to do it every day. I mean, this is, pre I, I forget Vatican II when that is, but this is pre Vatican II. It's like 60s, right? Yeah, Vatican II sixties. Yeah. So he's still doing it in Latin, and he's still yeah. He'll 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 be doing it in Latin. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's when we should catch him at least during mass or right after mass, and ask him what the hell's going on. Well, you shouldn't say it that way, though. Probably. <laughs> what the hell's going on? You might say <laughs> it like that. The way he speaks, you've heard him. I I know. I'm not really religious at all, but. Yeah, um, Henrietta is definitely a lapsed Catholic, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to be disrespectful. Okay. Not yet. All right. Well, I don't let slip uh, the the common vulgar and say what the <laughs> fuck is going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, it was something funny that occurred to me when we were in the meeting, but I can't remember what it was anymore. <laughs> Um, so is that what we should do is get get, get to at least some of us I don't know if all of us need to be there but uh, I'll definitely go to the church early in the morning if anybody wants to join me just be there for I'll follow along with you I suppose you think you're sure it's at 6 you think it's at 6 Henrietta well it uh, says in the door 6 Ma, Ma all right. yeah yeah Ma says yeah might as well might as well stop by, see uh, All right. see if he's there. Like I said, if he hasn't hit the booze already. <laughs> well, maybe what I'll do is I'll write a little note and slip it under his door tonight on the way back home and uh, just tell him that we're going to be there after Mass in the morning, early. Eesh, that 
should at least spur him on to be there at church. God knows God's not going to do it. Where is the church? Uh, St. Francis. Uh, it's practically across the street from where we are now, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Pretty close. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Uh, ladies, gentlemen, I think I'm going to retire for the evening. Likewise. And uh, yeah. we will... We will enjoy this little slow excursion down the rift tomorrow and um, find out what has happened to our poor dear caribou. How, how, how fast does that contraption go? Oh, I don't know. Who's going to drive? That's a good question is who's going to drive. I'm afraid that I do not know how to drive a car. Well, I, I can I can I can drive a a, 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 a motor car, but I'm I'm, I'm not sure I could. I, could I am told the that the the uh, the like uh, tank. I, I'm told yeah. that the controls are very similar. It turns a little differently, but that's all I've heard because of the tractors. Yes, it's actually quite similar in driving methods than uh, uh, to, a, to a vehicle, like a regular everyday vehicle. Except that you can literally turn it like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, because you can have the tracks going opposite directions. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And well, it's on I, skis. So. I mean, I, 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 I can drive a car, but... but um, well, I, where... I, I, I drive like an, an, an elderly man who, uh, who grew up riding horses. That's, that's good, <laughs> because that way it means you're going to be careful. We don't want uh, we don't want some crazy young person driving Hadja. like a maniac. Hadja, give me the keys. Not great. <laughs> um, what we have to do is we'll have to. Where where is it located? Is it located in town? It's at the military base north of town. Oh, so we have to get to the military base. Yeah. How are we going to get to the military base? Oh, there's I, there's no streetcars. Um, motor car it'll be a bit of a squeeze to get everyone in right. um, but well, perhaps it's... perhaps I, I I could I could um, drive drive someone up in in, in, in my old banger well I need to be and, there because and, and picking just, up my equipment. then they then they can bring the thing back down can't they back down to the town and pick everybody um, and up. We'll, we'll, we'll all meet you down in the town because I'm, I mean, I might be able to squeeze all of us in the car, but not with not with our equipment and everything. Well, why don't this is just why don't you, uh, why don't Percy and Owen go up together first? <coughs> go grab all your stuff from the military base or the airport, and then come back with a vehicle and pick everybody up. Why don't we pick everybody up from the brass monkey, from in front of the brass monkey? You guys can have breakfast. We'll go pick up the equipment. We'll come back down the same road, and we'll, we'll we're going to be crossing right there anyway. Um, and uh, you know, we should probably be leaving early. Uh, if, you know, do you do you want to meet with the the father first, and then you guys head up, or do yes. you want to go up and we can talk with them? Okay, all right. I think we'll go. We'll go to the. We'll go we'll see the priest. First. And then afterwards, you guys can go get some breakfast, and we'll go up the road to the military base, pick up stuff, right. come back, pick you guys up. That sounds like a plan. We should be, we should be I, on I our way I, by seven or eight. I, th I think I'd prefer to leave leave my car at the military base if they don't mind. I don't, yeah, I don't, sure really, I don't really like driving at this time. If you're... <laughs> Excuse me. They're tre treacherous on these roads. Yeah. All right. Snow Good coming. night. Ladies and gentlemen, good night. Uh, enjoy your evenings, and uh, with that, I leave and head to my apartment. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Everyone doing all the same, going to their own homes, or is there anybody? Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm, a, I'm away to my bungalow. Yep, I'm heading back to my cabin. It's very cold. <laughs> it is very cold. I'll and stay uh, the brass monkey till they close. <laughs> oh, you're gonna have too many coffee. You won't sleep. <laughs> well, it doesn't work as right. well, but. So everybody slips home except for Jimmy Marsden. Jimmy, it hits midnight. <laughs> they start to sweep the floors. There's about five of them hanging around. Everybody 
How long have you been in town, Jimmy? Uh, all my life. All your life. Oh, you've been here longer than anyone else then. Okay. Uh, how, how old is your character? Just uh, uh, 21. Okay. So not that long. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it hits, uh, hits midnight. Um, and uh, someone walks over and shuts the door or locks the front door, closes the blinds. And uh, anybody want a drink? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and I'll, That's why I'll, I'll, I'll break sneaky. out my base. Break out my base, and uh, <laughs> some of my buddies will start to kick up some jazz music. Yeah, you know, you know what's happening. You you play. You're a musician at a band, you, a bar. You know full well that uh, there's bootleggers in town who sell bootleg whiskey and uh, bootleg beer. Whiskey more likely because it's easier to store smaller amounts. And uh, this tavern is well known for after hours. Uh, drinking. So, how long are you going to stay? Anything you're going to do? Other, play some music? Just hang out for a bit? Yeah, pretty much. I'm, I'm, I know I'm supposed to get up early, but I'm not really thinking about that right now. Uh, because you're a musician. That's yeah. the way it happens. <laughs> okay, well, one or two o'clock rolls around and you're getting close to the end person. Yeah. And then I'll head home. All right. Okay. Next morning. Um, I, I assume, uh, did you did you say you were going to slip a note under the priest's door? Yes. On my way home, I, I just wrote a quick note saying, Father, we need to talk to you before we leave tomorrow. We will be at Mass at 6. All right. There's no lights after. on in his house. So. Right. I just slip it under the door. I figure he'll see it. All right. Well, you know where his house is near the church, so it's, it's easy to get to. Okay. Um, now, who... Uh, could everybody make a... Listen, roll. Oh boy, what time is it when we're doing this on our way home? Three in the morning. Okay. I pass. I film. Oh wait, life. no. Hold on. No, you didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, no, I did actually. Um, oh, I really? Baby. Listen. Wow. Mm, yep, Henrietta. Uh, yeah. Wow. She, uh... <laughs> okay. I've, I've, I've passed. I passed. Um, there's nothing wrong with my hearing. No. I feel as good as it ever, as it ever was. Uh, it's early good in the morning. I, uh, I'm not so good early in the morning. My That's my senses right. are sharp. There's nothing wrong with me. Well, you're all in different well, locations. I hear this from. Yeah, but uh, the the ones who pass at three in the morning, you hear a ding, 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 ding from the distance. Um, trying to figure like out a fire where, dinging or a fire like bell. A fire bell dinging. Uh, and what? it seems to be coming from the central part of town. Shit. So, um, yeah, Henrietta knows what that means because she's lived in a lot of, uh, you know, tenement kind of style uh, places. So she knows it's she's she's got to get out. Um, so she she hastily puts on her parka and and boots. Um, and and starts uh, and and kind of goes outside to see what's happening. I don't I don't know if she'd be able to see from where she's at, but she's kind of on in the, the map town there. On the map, yeah. where are you approximately located? Uh, kind of by the Brass Monkey, so in that sort of central okay. seven. Yeah. I I join join her shortly thereafter because I'm up north from the Brass Monkey, and I just walked okay. down the alley. Okay, I I bundled up too to see what's going on. Who well, else? I've, 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 I've got to. I've got. Well, I, I heard it, but I'm I'm a bit further out of town, and I've got to uh, load up my car, okay, my stuff to bring in, and and I've got to find. I don't know where to put my starting handle. <laughs> uh, I don't don't hear it because I'm out of town. So that's okay. Mm. Like what? What do you think? What what's what's on fire? Do and we have these see anything? I don't know. I don't know. We should go. Let's let's go check it out. It sounds like it's coming from the center of town. Yeah, you get. Uh, you can probably see it uh, from your vantage point when you step outside. Uh, it seems to be coming from right on the map where the eleven is. Let me see. The uh, local records and library. Eleven. Okay. Um, Why am I not yeah, I mean, so Ma, you know, is like well. The whole town could go up, so we better better head over there and see if they need help. I'm assuming it's just like a volunteer fire service, yeah. like the volunteer fire up. service. Um, well, I see it. All right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we go. I, I go with it. We go. Yeah, right I'm gonna now. go head over there. Yeah. yeah. Municipal <laughs> records is up in flames. I so at, at this time, is has anyone else? I mean, I'm assuming because the alarm's going. Um, is, is it just kind of someone ringing a bell or? Um, oh, wrong map. Um, it is the actual somebody is actually banging away at the bell, letting yeah. the world know that there is a, a, a fire, and the fire department has arrived. And you will see that it is, uh, there's the 11, that's where the fire is, the records office is over here, and the library's in this general area, but the records office itself is it fully engulfed. Well done. Oh okay. Um, we uh, we want to know if there's, is there anything that we can do to help? Is there yeah, a, we offer. Our, we, yeah, there's a bucket, 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 there's there's a a bucket, bucket brigade. Yeah. yeah, Chinese fire drill, yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> They, they're, everybody yeah. in town seems to be coming out to help because I mean, every, this whole town is made of wood. It could right. go up at yeah. any moment. Yeah. yeah. So. so I'm I'm uh, I'm on my way now. I've, uh... <laughs> is the water as as, freezing as, as we're as throwing as it? Oh, <laughs> no, dude, I'll, 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 I'll be there. Well, there is a there is a river nearby, so they actually have the ability, and there is a town uh, like a large vessel, like a t the town has water, so to speak, like a water tank, a large water tower. So the truck is filled up, and they actually have a let's tap at the back of the large truck, so you can fill up buckets and toss them on. And there's a hose yeah. as well. Of course, they got to break through the ice, don't they? Because it's if they got it from low. the river, yeah, that's like right. Frozen, yeah. Uh, so, so yeah, bad. So I mean, I, I won't. We don't need to to role play the fire, but uh, the, the, the between the hose, the bucket brigade, the number of locals that have showed up. Uh, the fire. It was able. To, they were able to stop the fire before it spread beyond the records office. The the outer wall of the uh, library did have some damage. There were windows broken out in an adjacent building uh, from the heat differential. But uh, generally, it's the records office gone. Okay. And uh, wow. when the fire department's poking around, looking in, and they see, they actually see inside the window of the records office a jerry can. That would have contained something flammable. They would assume because it generally isn't sitting in the middle of the floor of the. Uh, so like somebody office. started this fire. It's arson. Yeah. Fucking arson! What the hell? Yeah. In a place God like this, it. there's no criminal element up here. What the hell? And they knew that this whole town would go up if uh, if we hadn't have caught it in time. What the hell That's are crazy. they trying to hide? And who's okay. trying to hide it? Yeah, why the records? That's... Yeah, if, if, if they're going after the records, then it's probably something with the history, so it's probably something about the 1900. It's Think, gotta be yeah. because, well, for one thing that we know, what, what can we assume? We can assume that most of the town was there last night at the meeting, so they're aware of the problem, at least partly, that's going on. So somebody felt that the records had to be burned. Could it have been somebody at the at the brass monkey last night? Certainly not, uh, not uh, Mr. Davis. Well, I mean, there's no reason why he was very forthcoming with information. He wouldn't just turn yeah, around. Yeah, the, the, there's no reason he'd like the try priest? to keep us. But he wants to talk to us. The priest wanted to share information again. So. I did, however, leave him a note telling him that we're going to want to talk to him in the morning. Shit, that's a couple hours from now. Now I'm not going to be able to go back to sleep. Yeah, me, me either. Uh, huh. Well, doesn't really seem like there's any real good leads as far as, as far as I know. Um, I can't. I can't sleep either. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, Ma. Maybe when uh, when Mr. Daniels and I go to the the camp, and you know, I said everybody get breakfast. See if you can find out from the the, the fire people. Yeah. Anything that I got you looks suspicious, or yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Who the hell uh, would burn the fire? To the records office now. I ain't never seen nothing like that. That's uh, it's nuts. I mean, the only kind of criminal element I can imagine is 
I heard somewhere that there's a speakeasy. In it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, Doc, I think it. you I think you've actually been there before. Frequented by jazz musicians. Yeah. <laughs> Where? <laughs> maybe I'm maybe I'll take you. How much I could time. use I could use a drink so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I may be a vegetarian, but oh my god. I could sure go for some of that potato juice. <laughs> <laughs> Henrietta kind of winks and uh, and takes takes him back to her uh, her apartment and you know pours him pours him a stiff one from uh, from her little yep. stash. Oh my god! <laughs> Every local we need something to warm stash. us up, right? Right, Doc? Wink, wink. Yeah, we need something to warm us up. Uh, you're not a bad looking woman. <laughs> oh cut to cut to five thirty eight. Remember, remember Brad Brad Bass. family friendly show. <laughs> we are. We, we are, we've got an adult disclaimer at the beginning of our show. <laughs> this is a dock side dogs. <laughs> or or midnight harvest. <laughs> so um cut to so oh what's God. everyone doing the fire the fire department is in cleanup mode now um yeah. this isn't this isn't modern days they're not taking temperature measurements or anything like that they're just they they but the fact that it's arson is obvious uh oh i think we lost sean oh no are you gone oh, uh, no, you're back. Uh, but you're well, back. we you got cut off in mid-sentence you said the oh. there, there's something and then it stopped Oh, that, I can't say it again. No, I'm just joking. Um, I just mm -hmm. said that the municipal, municipal people are, has started to show up in some of them in like their pajamas with boots and night shirts mm -hmm. and jackets. And uh, the, the boss of the records department, the, the clerk, has showed up and they're sort of directing them to try to gather anything they can that's not damaged and uh, move it into the library. So the library doors open and they've got a little back and forth like line of people just trying to take anything that they can salvage into there. Uh, the, the building itself is gone, but some of the records were in some sealed boxes. Uh, you'll you see as you watch that not everything was destroyed, but quite a bit was severely damaged. And they're moving it into the floor. Oh. Police officers Last. that finally showed up as well. Okay, you got cut off again. They're moving it into the... That's as far as we got of you. Oh, they're moving it into the library. Into the library. Okay. okay. Um, uh, can we ask the the whoever is in charge over there at the moment saying uh, when we looked in, when we were helping fight the fire, it looked to us like it was probably arson. Do you guys agree? Yes, they, they do. They say that it's not right. They said uh, they could see when the first person who arrived, you can hear me, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. The first person that arrived on the scene who reported it said that there were footprints all around the place in the news, the newly fallen snow, because it was snowing that last night. Mm -hmm. And they led up to the window, the main big window, and the window was smashed in and the flames were just all over the floor. And when they, when they were arrived, there, sorry, go ahead. Um, were there a lot of footprints? The person didn't count, but they said it looked like a lot of people had been walking around outside. Really? Um, question: Even those of us that didn't make the listen reel, are, are we are we like all in town now? Eventually, I I would say it makes sense that eventually you would notice there was a lot more noise. There's people's yeah, voices. Yeah. There's more dinging. There's vehicle traffic that doesn't happen that time of night. So yes, you you did notice. You can all be present at the fire crew. And okay. this is like what four four thirty in the morning now. It's about four thirty in the morning. Yeah. Because I was wondering if I could make if I could make like if I could make a track reel to see if there's like I don't know any clear outliers in terms of like footprints or whatever. If you yeah you can walk around. What's uh, make a roll and tell me if you succeed. I don't have I think I think prob still... probably mostly the firefighters at this point. I mean yeah mm -hmm. obviously so the fires probably melted a lot too. Yeah. But you know. Also, oh, I. Uh, sorry, my character gets in town around uh -huh. five thirty, six o'clock. Okay, yeah. well, we're not there yet, so. It's not. Time I know. Yet. I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be a little while. Okay, I'm, I'm just. I'm, opening. I'm still on my way. Uh, Forty-three. I have a track of fifty, so that's a damn, pass. Damn kids. 
<laughs> yeah, it's uh, sorry. Uh, did you say it was a pass, Quinn? Uh, yes, I have a track of fifty. Okay. Uh, as you walk around, and you're you sort of doing the tracker thing, where you start in the center and you expand outwards. Mm -hmm. You can see the footprints from all the people and the spilled water and the direction people were coming in to throw water in the fire and such. Because the fire was at one point, it wasn't the entire building where they were putting it a, a spread. Mm -hmm. Footprints moving away from the building itself okay. to the. Oh, I gotta turn this. I, I'm a terrible person. I put the north arrow in the wrong place. The north should be at the top of the page on a map. Uh, it would be to the west. So heading out toward in the west towards the residential areas at this bottom of the page, mm -hmm. uh, there's a series of footprints. You make it out to be approximately four individuals, okay, uh, wearing different types of boots, running. Okay, and they ran off towards the south, or sorry, towards the west. Okay, I'm I'm gonna point this out to the rest of the team. Mm -hmm. So, do you think it's four people? Four That's what it looks like. Were there any, did you guys notice any buddy in the, uh, in the brass monkey that looked out of place or when we were in there, any strangers or mm. surely nobody who lives here would do anything so horrible. GM, do you want me to um, do like a retroactive spot hidden, like to see if I, I recognize anyone that would have been out of, you can. Out of character. Yeah. Okay. Any, anybody who's in the Brass Monkey can make a spot hidden if they wish. Okay. I do not. No. You unsee things. I, unsee I, I, things. Didn't, I didn't see anybody out of, out of the ordinary. So no passes? Mm -hmm. Jamie, do you want to do one? I'm thinking I shouldn't do one because I'm not there yet. Losing track. And I know Percy's hours away. I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating on the road. I know. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me when I'm driving in snow. That's me. Yeah. People um, along the way look out their windows and they say, I think that car is moving. Does it need a push? Going very slowly. All right. Well, um, so obviously, uh, no successes. So obviously, no, uh, no, no information if there was any for you. Okay. <sighs> stranger and stranger. Jeez. Pointed up. Mm -hmm. Isn't freshly fallen snow great for finding things? How many, how many people are at the the military base? It's actually a very small military base. Um, there's really only about ten people there. It's it's just a, a transfer point, really. Right, these, but they're not, feeling. these these footprints weren't heading in that direction. They were heading in the opposite direction. Yes, that's right. The air base is uh, to the north. Well, slightly to the north northwest. Uh, this is going directly to the west towards the residential areas, which is uh, some housing used by uh, off-duty mine staff, mainly, but other people. Hmm. Too. Miners, miners be behind us. Why would they? There's no reason. Unless, uh, unless well, there's something fishy about the mine that they wanted to get yeah, the Yeah, well, and you remember them mining folks didn't want to share their food with us, or they seemed a little, uh, little, that could be a reason. I don't know why they would start with the records department. They should have started in the residential. That place would have gone up like a, like a matchbook. I never trusted those miners, and I've only been here three weeks. <laughs> Really, yeah. you know, they just seemed like they were dirty. <laughs> mm. Hands, no, no, no. Yeah. So hands always, just, like skin is all dirt under their fingers. Now what they live doing? in the mine, right? Like they live out at the mine. They don't live in the town. The miners. Oh or no, do they? Um, actually, there is there is some housing uh, at the mine site for people who are on shift work because it's a little mm. bit of a distance to travel back and forth. The residential right. area to the west where the footprints are going to, primarily, it is mining staff. Mm. It's, uh, it's boarding houses and such, because these guys come up for six months at a time or three months, and then they head back. Um, this is like the, the rental housing or the mine-owned housing that just they're living in. Other people can live in this area too. Mm, cut out. 
we cut we you, you said other other people can live in this area too and then you cut out i was just saying it's pr it's not primarily it's not exclusively mining staff i see yeah can we follow the footprints to where they came from or where they went to if you have a tracker are they still I'm pointing it to uh, howdy oh. yeah <laughs> um, let's, yeah let's, so let's get some answers let's find out what the hell is going on yeah so can i follow the trail do any trails that? can we can we like grab a cop so that we're not like the, <laughs> yeah know. that too we should coordinate with local there's a couple cops nearby i mean there's only about four in the whole town but the right there's two nearby um we point out the 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 this footprints mm -hmm. and say you know we want to find out what the hell happened here so let's go all right well um which one do you there's two cops one's a younger one one is a more senior one who do you go to a more senior one all right um what would be the equivalent of charisma uh i'm thinking in D D terms here sorry yeah <laughs> appeal <laughs> well charm charm you does anybody have i i wouldn't say it's more a charm just uh somebody wait I have intimidate. I could, I could like control the, the cops to, to come in with us. Well, let's just say um, they listen to you. The cop seems a little bit put off. It's like, oh, there's footprints everywhere. If you guys want to go chasing down footprints in the snow, go ahead. Tell me if you find anything, but we got to stick around here. Our protectors. Thank you. I'm going to try right. to intimidate him. Hold on. Let me see. <laughs> I pass. So I'm going to say, hey, listen here, buddy. Uh, we caught these arsonists. We need your help. Ma, ma, settle down. Okay, okay. Look, um, Jim, do you want to go for a walk? I'll keep things. Sends the young guy. Says, you just take a walk. Go. All right, come on, whippersnapper. Go let's let's go. Let's go find these these assholes. Uh, He's a little grumpy because right. he doesn't he, he he didn't expect to be in the uh, walking around he was he thought he was gonna be sitting in a nice warm car watching this fire but uh, so he goes with you so you've got a you've got a cop with you who actually has a pistol cool okay, okay. so let's follow them towards what the mining area of the town the time mining the residential is that what area. we're finding or is it a residential area mm -hmm. it's a residential area where mining people primarily stay okay. right. so go ahead uh what 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 were you rolling for tracking there before? Was it tracking? Uh, yeah, there's a track skill that I have. Well, roll roll it again. See what you get. Um, wait, wait, hang on. Actually, oh, right. I have tracking too. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, eighty. That's a fail. Lovely. Yeah. Hold on. What do you have? Uh, <laughs> I have uh, fifty five, and I got a forty nine. So nice. Ooh, I can do it. Nice. All right, Elaine, you wander off a bit, and you go. <laughs> ah. What the heck? But then Dr. Brody's like, over, like here. over here. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so after a minute you, you lose it. So you're so following We're again. following are we're following four sets of footprints, yes? It's it's like four people walking not abreast. Side by side? Not quite side by side, but like two two and two, like in a group. Okay. So it's it's Do fairly you see any follow. place where where they split up or Yes. Yes, that's the next. So now you get to the point where you're at the edge of the residential area. Uh, and this isn't mapped because it's very generic. And right. they do split up. So they go left, right, and then left, right in the center. So like, like, so you can choose uh, one, two, three, or four. All right. Doc, you want to come with me? And then, uh, and then, uh, Elaine, you go off with, uh, you go off with, with our young friend here. I don't know. I think these are these are obviously somebody setting fire. They're criminals. We better. Yeah, we should stick together. Up. We should stick together and keep the cop with us. The, 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 ah, once we got one, on, once Ellie. we got one, we can. Come uh, on. We can take them. Once we have one of them, then we can intimidate the, the other names. All right. She kind of cracks her knuckles. All right. Which way should we go? So. Y'all we'll are the trackers. We'll go in number one. We'll just make it easy. Hey. One, two, three, or four, we pick number one. <laughs> okay. Hmm? All right. All right, so we'll head off. 
So well, it just us four. Well, Jimmy's not just, there yet. And Percy's. Okay. Well, how far away are you actually, Percy? Are you getting close, you think? I'm, I think I'm, you probably arrived at the fire probably, by now. I'm probably, yes. I'm, I think I'm there and wondering why no one's about and, and why the records office appears to have been burned down. <laughs> well, there's firefighters uh, there, there's a police officer, and there's some municipal staff still kind of carting things into the library and putting them down on the floor. Aren't you part of that team? The bunch of the guys, you're, 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 you're off. They all went that way. They've already left or? They're off <laughs> chasing some footprints they found in the snow. Oh, all right. Um, into Miner's Village, whatever the residential area that that direction he points, and it's an area of bunk, small bungalow houses, and a few higher up uh, rooming houses where the mining staff stay. The the, the seasonal workers when they're not well, on shift. Well, I'll I'll I'll, um, I'll I'll get my shooting stick and uh, to support myself. I don't want to fall over. Um, Lock the car, and um, I'll, 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 I'll go in the direction the uh, the policeman has, uh, has indicated. Okay. Jimmy, how far away are you? Well, you said 5.30 before you arrived, did you not? Or what did you say? Yes, I will, I will, arrive, at I will arrive at 5.30. Oh, Clayton, I'm sorry. It was Clayton who was, okay. Yes. Sorry, I was getting, getting confused here. Yeah, I'll, right. I'll arrive at 5.30, so. Okay, not quite yet. Not quite yet. So. Okay. so everybody who is following the footprints, uh, I need someone to make another, or both of you to make another tracking roll. Cool. Okay. Um, 24, um, I didn't make it. 51, I passed again. All right. You both uh, agree, obviously. The tracks go to one of the boarding houses, to the front. Okay. Uh, walkway, and then the walkway has been cleared of snow, so that you know that it goes towards across the street. It hits the sidewalk, heading towards the walkway that goes up to the uh, boarding house, mm -hmm. but you don't see any footprints beyond that point. Right, because there, there's no snow there. Or, yeah. Well, it's icy. so we know that. Okay, and we know, but but we can assume that there that one of these perps was in the the boarding house there. Oh, geez. Ma has sprouted tentacles again. Yeah, I got tentacles going here. <laughs> um, well, let's let's knock on let's knock on this uh, bastard store. I guess yeah. I guess we should, we should have Ma go first because she's the most like known in the community, so it'll be less like intrusive. Let the cop go first. That that, that, that is a good. I'll point. walk up with him. him. I'll I'll pull him along with me, but uh, ah. but she she just starts banging on the door. Open up. Uh, he's a little reluctant. He goes, oh, God, these people are all sleeping. they got to work tomorrow. He could just be, ah, oh, whatever. He knocks on the door with his stick. Tap, 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 tap. Tell him you got a tap, warrant. Tap, tap. Tell him you got a warrant. Oh, I can't say that. <laughs> so the uh, eventually the uh, a woman comes to the door, and you recognize her, Mosh. She's, uh, she's like the, I don't know what you call it, outside of English TV shows. <laughs> House marm, I don't know. So the house, the house woman who runs the boarding house, house mother. Yeah, the house mother. House mother. She she runs. She the, comes to the door. The landlady. Okay, yeah. All right, landlady. The landlady. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, how's how's it going? Uh, I don't know what her name is. Um, school marm. Miss um, <laughs> <laughs> Crabapple. Miss Crabapple. Miss right. Crabapple. Um, <laughs> Uh, hey, listen, Krabappel. I don't know if you. I, I don't know if you if you've uh, if you've been around out there, but you know the whole town's burning down, and we tracked the arson back here. Has anyone left this building? She looks towards the center of town and says, "What are you talking about?" She can smell smoke. She stop! Like, smell stop smoke. looking! Stop looking! Where? Where's the? Uh, where? Where's? Uh, has anyone left this this building? Just nobody can leave this building without unlocking this door. And I came to the door and it was locked. And they would have to unlock, oh, I guess they could have done that. She goes, nobody ever leaves, they're too tired. They work a long, hard day. These boys, just what? None of my boys would, what are you, what are you accusing them of? Pardon and you can me, hear- how, how many people stay here in here? 
boarding house? Six. There are six rooms. Well, we have reason to believe that one she of them She looks back at the hallway house. and she, she looks down at her feet. She goes, why are my feet wet? Mm. <laughs> Somebody's... So it's she, tracking. Was, she looks back. She sees, she sees no boots, but there's, there's snowy, wet spots on the, Can on we the mat. Ask her, we have reason to believe that somebody in your place uh, was involved in the arson. They burned down the records place. May we come in? May we see if you, you notice the wetness on the floor? Can we follow it to a bedroom? She, she looks at the police officer and, and says, is this on the up and up? And he reluctantly says, yeah. And he says, well, actually, yeah, this is it's getting a little more serious. I'm, I'm starting to believe what's going on here. He says, yes, let's, let, let me go. And he says, let me go forward. So he pushes past her politely, excusing her. She's, she's about his age, and he kind of smiles as he touches her shoulders and moves to the side for each other. And he says, you might want to stay outside just in case. Have, have I caught up with them yet? You have seen... You, you don't need tracking skills because there's this mass of footprints you can follow. <laughs> right. you, there's four or five, like ten sets of footprints, whatever it is now. Uh, so it's quite easy to follow the path. So you, you've actually caught up with them at the outside of the boarding house on the walkway. As, and you see the police officer going inside the building. So we're so waiting on the porch. He goes in. We'll wait outside, yeah. Yeah. So he, he is goes, that, he goes is up to the you? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll tell yeah, you about it. Come on over, Daniels. Uh, I, I say I'm sorry, Miss Krabappel, to wake you up. It's just it's it's been a stressful night. Oh, she, she's she's a little flustered now because you know, of course, she's in her nightshirt and she's standing outside in the cold, and it's like minus whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. She's just she's standing kind of half in the door, half out. So the police officer walks in, and he's sort of looking at the ground, looking at the stairs, and you can see that there's there's two sets of rooms on the main floor. One is hers. There's another doorway, up, and then it goes upstairs to a landing where there are two, four more doors. And so he's, as you can see, as best you can see, he goes up the stairs and starts following the wet footprints, following the wet footprints. And at the top of the stairs, he says he picks up a pair of boots and shows everybody there's a pair of boots at the top of the stairs. He puts them back down, and he just starts walking from one door to the next, banging on the door, knocking, waking people up. And... Uh, in each situation, first one guy comes out, heavy set, older guy, reeks of. Well, he just steps back. He goes, "Whoa!" He says, oh. he says, "You've been where? Where have you been getting booze this time of night?" And the guy mutters and mumbles to him. He says, "Just go back in your room." He says, "We're investigating. Don't leave the building." Goes to the next room, knocks on the door, no answer. The other two doors start to open, and some other miners come out and. You know their pajamas or night night shirts, whatever the heck they were in the twenties. And uh, this one door, the door will not open. So he pounds on the door, pounds on the door, and he steps aside, looks down to uh, the lady, the landlady, and says, "Do you have a key to this room?" And she says, "Yes, it's in my room. It's on a keychain." He says, "Could you get it?" And she says, "Yes." And she goes down to get the key, and. Uh, takes her a minute to find it and he's standing outside the door a bit a little cautious stepping back being careful just in case something happens she brings he she says could one of you run the key up to him please I yeah Ma, go Ma, up Ma, i'll run up there okay so she steps back again the other two fellows go into the rooms and shut the doors and uh he puts the i think we kind, of, we kind of stepped into the front room though by now we're, we're out of the cold I, i'm, I'm assuming, yeah, yeah. It's too cold to stand outside much longer. Well, so he unlocks the door, opens the door, and you can feel, because you've got the front door open still, a rush of air. And he looks in, and he says, there's nobody here. Mm. Is the, the window open? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the window's open. <sighs> well, now we got to go find the track underneath the window. <laughs> You hear you hear the sound right. of a vehicle in the distance. Ah, piss! Mm -hmm. Not too far away, a few houses down. You hear a vehicle. Uh, uh, Ma, who was? I mean, not Ma. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, Miss Krabap, Krabapple. Who is uh, uh, Edna? Edna. Edna. Um, yeah. who, is, who is staying in this room? Do you know? Martin Fashon. Martin, Martin Fashon. Is he a minor? Gentleman. I don't recognize that name. He's uh, some sort of, he, he's one of the new fellas. He only came here last week. He's a mining supervisor, one of the mining supervisors. I haven't, I've hardly had, he only speaks French, so I don't, broken English, I don't speak French. All right, so most likely he headed over to his car and drove away. Mm -hmm. He didn't have a car. No, he definitely didn't and have he a stole vehicle. a car. Um, or Mr. his friends. Daniels, where's your car? We better she go check and make sure car, take, so. We yeah. better make sure he didn't take Mr. Daniels' car. Well, Mr. Daniels' car is back at the fire. So, well, yeah. Yes. Okay. He walked over. Well, we have three other tracks to follow, but. Uh, it's actually well a, we know we know who he is we have his information he works over at the mine he's a supervisor he's a higher up maybe when we're headed out to uh to you know to the little outpost we can stop by at the mine and get more info on this guy well there's something else and that's the fact that this really isn't our business we just happen to stick our noses in we've got <laughs> something that we're supposed to be doing the mm -hmm. cops now know that these people are involved. Yeah, it's really their job. That's that's true. true. But it's... I mean, it might have something to do with something with the mine and something they're doing. But and it might tie in. But at the moment, it's not really our business. So. That's true. We we get we, 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 have, we, have, we have a job. To We've yeah. got a job that we're supposed to do in an hour. I'm not, and I'm, I'm not sure how how good an idea it would be to mess with these these miners. Some of them are quite rough customers, you know. Mm. Mm. True. Okay. So, well, it is eight o'clock. Any uh, closing words for shot from Sean? I think you've done very well tonight, and uh, so I, I it's nothing really. Uh, the police officer is definitely uh, fully on board now and is taking notes and asking all kinds of questions about Mr. Vachon's information from the landlady. And he's sort of ignoring you right now. So I would say you are on your own. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and finish it then. Our players included Corey Heisted, Quinn Skudalarska, Mick Swan, Troy Wheel Dryer, Jeff Wilkins, and myself with Sean Little as the Keeper of the Secrets. Our games are played using traditional tabletop methods with music and sound effects added in post-production in order to create a richer listener experience. Our musical, intrus, our, our musical intro, Sea of Doom, was written by Doug Maxwell and is provided free to use by YouTube Audio. We're now providing audio-only versions of our show so that you can listen to them while driving or working out. They're free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. We've created a Patreon account where you can help us with the cost of show production and website maintenance. We've uh, set it so that you can contribute a small amount per episode and set a cap so that you don't overdo it. Feel free to send us comments on the show. We'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed our broadcast, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for updates on our latest shows. You'll find links to our website, to Patreon, Podbean, iTunes, and our Twitter page in the description below. This is Tom Rayleigh inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the, and the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.